Hey, 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 guys. Welcome to the KFO Show. My name is Darren Wendell. I'm your host. You can find me at Wendell Fishing on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Although YouTube is by far my favorite platform. So, guys, I'm excited. Some of you guys are like, hey, what are you guys doing on this, this Tuesday night? Uh, I think last week I mistakenly told everybody that we were not on, which was a big fail because we got we got the goods tonight. I got John from Creek Fishing Adventures going to be joining us. And so I'm pretty pumped to be talking to him. Hopefully we'll be taking a lot of the questions from those of you listening in. So if you have a question and you're on you know, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, please go ahead and type in question. I'll go ahead and star that and hopefully uh, we'll get back and kind of circle around and answer that. I want to give a thanks and shout out to the sponsor of tonight's show, usrivermaps.com. You see one over my shoulder here. If you're on the podcast, you're like, what are you talking about, Darren? Uh, these things are pretty sweet. Go over there. I, I, I'd like to explain them to you, but this is kind of far in the distance. You're not seeing the detail that I get to see. So if you love waterways, love rivers and streams, John, I know you do. He's sitting in the sitting in the green room right now getting ready. Um, check it out. And I got a deal for you guys. $35 off. Here's the code, cheat code to get that off. But it's only good for another like four and a half days. So through the end of the year, Jeff, who is the, the owner of US River Maps, is a listener. He might even be on tonight. So, Jeff, thank you so much for bringing value to the show. Guys, uh, we have quite the lineup uh, over the next two months that we have booked out. Check this out. So, of course, tonight we got John. Next week, we got Chris and Drew from the Paddlers uh, Playbook. On the 10th, we got Alex Rudd. The 17th, we got Chad Hoover. 24th, Jeff Mallett from the Kayak Bass Nation. Um, 31st, we got Bass Geek. February 7th, we got Yak Rods. Um, Valentine's Day on the 14th, so go find yourself a date. Uh, February 21st, we got Fish Anything. Uh, that's the guy who owns Mule Fishing Supply. On the 23rd, 28th, we got Benjamin Nowak, and I just booked Cass Cray um, for March 7th. We're already in the March 7th. Guys, this is ridiculous. So I am pumped about the lineup, but instead of talking about the talent we got coming up in the next two months, let's talk about the talent we got tonight. John, welcome to the show, brother. How hey, you doing? Thanks for having me. Woo, Man, all, after, all after hearing that, after hearing that lineup, I'm really appreciative to be here. Goodness, what, what do you mean you're appreciative? If you guys don't know, if you ever, if you haven't for some reason somehow in this universe not been able to see John's videos, 126 thousand subscribers, 37 million views, folks. That is a lot of eyeballs. In fact, that's 74 million eyeballs. Uh, that's a lot of people watching your videos. John, tell me the story. What's your YouTube journey, man? From I mean, I know a little bit of it, but I've, I've never heard it in its entirety. So lay it on us. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Well, it all started a long time ago. So uh, like a couple of key things, like early on in my life, uh, when I was four or five, we moved uh, to this house that had a little bitty creek behind the house. I lived there from for about four or five years. My dad was a pastor of the church and um, we moved a couple of times. He pastored a few different churches and stuff. And <clears throat> so that that's the start of it. Like, I, I, I loved exploring it. I loved to catch the tiniest little darters in there, the crawdads, the tadpoles, catch little fish, you know, and just, I, that's the most fishing I did. I would go bank fishing at a river or a lake if somebody took me or my parents, we went on, we go, you know, to the park or something like that. I remember going on a boat, like maybe twice in my life, All like right. as, as a kid, I never went out on that. So I always had that growing up, I got into sports, played basketball and like, through high school and then that like you know that's basically all i did so like that and of course work and then i got into trucks a little bit I always fish and then when i moved over here to east tennessee about eight years ago is when i kind of started got back into fishing like hardcore and I, and there's so many creeks around this area i kind of started getting back into like exploring and i'm like and i, I and they, I, I did hvac and um there was a guy that i worked with and, and he liked it also and he would take me to some of these places and i'm like man I got to go find more and more of these places. So I'm just like all into it, have time because I, I kind of give up my hobbies of like trucks and other things. I'm, I live in an apartment when I move here. So I'm like, I got to find something to do. Right. So I just started doing that again, like kind of like picking it back up from it as I used to do as a kid. And I love the Creek stuff. And this is what, uh, probably seven, seven to eight years ago. That's when I first started like watching stuff on YouTube. Like kind of, yeah. I always watch it for like Tracy McGrady highlight dunks. I was like stuff like that. Let's, <laughs> let's see Vince Carter. Let me see what you got. Like that's all I thought YouTube was. And then I, I like start seeing guys that are like making fishing videos. And so, so 
this is what I did. So this is this is the only reason I am what I am today because I started searching for creek fishing on YouTube and I couldn't find anybody doing it. Nothing. If I would have found people doing it, I never would have picked. I never would have tried it. I'm the last guy. This? Do what? How long ago was this? Probably seven years ago now. Okay. Um, because I I well, yeah, I started about I started my channel six and a half years ago. Okay. And I've been doing it full time for three years. Three, 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 yeah, about three years. So it took me three, around three years or so to kind of build it up and everything. Well, you can't, you can't, you skipped like seven years on us. Go back, go back to pre, yeah, pre going full time. <laughs> so I, um, so like I'm looking and I'm like, I start talking to people. I'm like, hey, what if I made fishing videos? And you know, you talk to family, they're like, yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, I already know, like, you're never going to get any encouragement from family. Everything you do is dumb. We make All we do is make fun of each other. I got two brothers and three sisters. So, you know, all we just pick on each other for everything. <laughs> I, I never, uh, never, I didn't even have a computer. I didn't have a camera. I never made a video in my life. Didn't even, like, post it into Facebook. I'm like, I'm the opposite of, like, the social media guy. But I just kept bugging me. I'm like, I want to see somebody just exploring creeks, catching fish, and actually know what they're talking about, or at least identifying them right, instead of, Oh man, look at this little fish that bit. That's not what I wanted. I just like, I like to catch everything. Like, I don't want to, I, I hate, I'm tired of watching bass fishermen complain about these little bass. Like, I'll take the little bass. I'll be excited to get them. Right. Or the little bluegill. So, um, I thought about it for like three months and then I'm like, I'm just, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go, I went and bought a laptop and a camera and I made my first video that first day. <laughs> the first day I bought that. I took my nephew and my cousin to this little creek and we caught like, 10, 15 fish in like 30 minutes. All right. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. Just, just see what happens. Like, I don't care if it's horrible. It'll never amount to anything anyways. So th that first year I start in the spring, I do it through the summer. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I'm showing it to friends at work and like, just, you know, people around town. Like, Hey, I fished the, the greenway in town. There, there's like a little greenway we have. And I'm like, right. look what I caught in there. I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. You know, 10 people a few in it. Takes me well that summer I did it. Didn't do I didn't make a single video in the winter. The next summer, I'm like, hey, it's time to start fishing again. Okay. Like April. And I do it again. And I noticed it grow a little bit. But the, the the biggest thing was I noticed that I enjoyed the journey of it. And that that was, you know, that's that's huge. You have to enjoy what it what it is. So I enjoyed like, you know what? This is fun making these videos. This is fun searching out new places. YouTube is pushing me wanting to make videos is pushing me to go further and further and like find more things to show. Cause I just, it's just cool to show. And that second year at the end of the year is right around that second year. I finally, I finally got to a thousand subscribers and I started like messaging other people and like kind of getting, I actually started meeting people on YouTube, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of, they're, you know, we're kind of sharing ideas or just like, I'm seeing what they're doing and I'm like, Hey, this is, I mean, certain people are watching it, you know, I'm making, hundred dollars a month. I was like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And then right at, I might have times off a little bit, but right around, right around two and a half years in it, um, I start, I, I'd actually did a few winter videos cause I, I never fished in the winter before. Usually I just quit. I'm like, ah, right. so I, I did a few winter videos. And then that spring I had one video that got like 20,000 views in like two weeks. And I was just blown away. Whoa. <laughs> I'm talking to like everybody at work. Everybody like, had you seen this? Like, this is crazy. They're like, I know it's ridiculous. And then like a, like a month or two later, was that, no, that was in March. No, that was, that was in November. And it, it kind of, I kind of got a few views to the winter, but then in March that next year. So I think this is like getting close to three years of doing it. Yeah. I, I get, I'm at right at like three, 3,500, 4,000 subscribers. I'm, I'm like super happy. I'm like, I'm getting like three or 400 views of video you know, sometimes 500 views. Uh, it's getting consistent. I'm actually making, I was making like a couple hundred dollars a month. And I thought this is how it was going to be forever. I'm like, this is it. Like yeah. I've made it. Well, yeah, <laughs> you're paying for your hobby at that point, right? You have, yeah. you have made it. You're living the yeah. dream. I was, I, I thought it was the biggest <laughs> thing. I had like people, you know, from like Ireland would comment. I'm like, oh my goodness. People know me all over the world. And um, I'm just like, yeah, this is, this is fun. And I, and I noticed at that, at that moment, that's when I was like, if I could, if I could make more videos, I could increase my revenue and then I would increase the traction. And then that would just, cause the way I've seen, I'm like, if I could just do more. So I'm like, 
I work HVAC, so and I'm on call all the time. So you're on call. I don't know what time I get off. I'm on call on the weekends all the time. Mm. So it was really hard to take time to go make videos. So I could hit a creek in a couple hours and probably put together a video where I didn't have to have all day. So I just like, I, mean, I want to do more and more. And I'm getting consumed with this. This, this is where I have a problem. I'm like, man, I, if I just want to do this. And then it was, it was either March or April. It like, it just hit, it flipped a switch. I went from 4,000 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers in one month. Jeez. And I had a couple videos just take off and get like 500,000 views I have from like the previous year. Like there weren't even yeah. new ones. Like I don't even, I have no idea reason why. Um, it just starts, it starts going. I'm hitting it. I'm at like 15,000 subscribers, you know, two, three months later. And then I'm, I'm just seeing it climb. I'm starting to make, I find I'm like that month I made over a thousand dollars and it never, it never has gone down past that again. I went from like $200 to thousand dollars and it never dropped lower than that. And it, and like for four months, I just saved all the money I made. I made, I probably saved, made like $10,000 and I'm just like saving it. Cause I'm like, if this keeps going, I'm quitting my job. Right. I'm like, I'm going to do it. And I, and I, at this point I'm still like 18,000 subscribers. So I'm like thinking about it. It keeps growing. I hit like 23,000 and I'm like, I'm, I'm quitting. Like I'm going to do it. I don't, I don't care if I lose all everything. I'll, I mean, I ramen noodle want to do it if I have to. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll go back to, I'll go back to working again. Like, I, I mean, I don't care. I mean, I, I'll get to say that I tried something and I'm not the kind of guy to just try stuff. So it was different for me. I, I'm, I'm 30 years old at the point. I'm getting more confidence in myself and as just growing and like, I'm like, I'm ready to do some kind of risky thing or do something different. Like I need this in, in my life, I guess. Mm. So I turned my notice in. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> like how, you're how doing what? Feel? I didn't even know I was half of them didn't even know I was making any money. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's going. I was like, I I think I had like 15,000 saved up. I had like 15,000 in my savings. And I'm like, I'll live off this um for a while and hopefully my revenue will catch up. Right. And um since that point, I quit. I, I got YouTuber on the rise, like on a couple of videos right when I quit. That's like they they do this thing like I guess you're growing fast or whatever. And that even promoted that even that gave me like a thousand subscribers in like one day because YouTube like promoted my channel. Oh, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. They I had neither. I, a buddy of mine, uh, Arm Stanley Homestead, he had, he had a lot bigger channel. He's like, You're YouTuber on the rise. I'm like, What is that? What is I had that? to look it up. Um, You're just tripping over success over here. Yeah. I love it. So it just so that, that's where it started. I, I quit and I'm like, All right, let's just start making videos and let me see how I can just try to improve every day. And I want to get out three videos a week. I'm going to actually fish through the winter, try to figure things out. Um, and I've been doing it for three, just over three years. Like, uh, I think it was in September, it was three years. Um, I coached basketball. I'm coaching basketball right now. I coached last year. And then I helped like a couple of years ago. So I've, I've been able to do some stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, for my church. My, well, my church has a, like a small school. So it, it's, um, it's, it's right down the road. It's real close. So I can do that through the yeah. winter time. Um, and I've, I've got to go to Texas, Florida several times. I got to go fish with, uh, you're going to have Ethan on up in Michigan. I got to go fish oh, yeah. with him. Um, I've got to go do all kinds. Of, I've gotten to do more fishing than most people will do in their lifetime in the last three years. And I'm like, and if it goes away tomorrow, I'm not, I'm not going to be mad. I'm like, I had an <laughs> awesome run, but I, I was talking to a guy the other day. I was like, if I, if it ever stops or if I ever like dwindles, cause it, YouTube's up and down, it's crazy. If ever dwindles, I'll have to like whatever I go back to, I have to go to it like 100%. I can't, I don't think I can mentally like focus on trying to keep YouTube going while doing another job again. Mm. It's just, it's too much work. <laughs> like, I, all I do is this YouTube and I'm always doing stuff. I'm nonstop like doing something, editing, answering questions, planning things out. You know, I got a fishing trip tomorrow, two hours away, I get up and go to. Um, hey, I don't just, imagine with that many, but, you know, people following how many questions you get every day. Do you answer all of them? Some. I, I'm about to say. I try, I try to do. keep up, but I also block stuff out. I'll like, especially when I go fishing or I'll take two days and not look at a single message. And I yeah. don't care if people get upset or not. I'm like, I'm just, this is not, I'm going to do YouTube the way I want to do it. I'm not going to cater 
to people. And that's how I've lived my YouTube career. I'm doing it the way I want to do it, making the videos I want to make. And if they like it, they like it. If they don't, I don't care. Well, people yeah. like it. Uh, I got yeah. some got some uh, comments over here. Don't you love it? The guys and, and gals that kind of been with you from the beginning. Yeah. And you like recognize your names. Like I, just, I, I love those. I got a bunch of those as well. It's coming from Fishing with Gramps. Uh, he just noticed that you're literally excited about every fish that you catch. And you can tell it's genuine. Um, and so love that. What were we else out here? Rewind. Come on, man. Glad to have some background now to go to sleep with. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's a compliment the fact that you're on or like we're put, I, I put you on to put, cause you put me to sleep. I don't, I'm not yeah. sure. Um, hey, as long as they're watching, right. You know, yeah, you know, <laughs> keep it rolling. I guess. Don't fall ads, asleep, get to watch the ads longer. <laughs> Matt's a fishing mission. Creek oh, and bass jumping. Oh, right on. Uh, Jeff said it was a great story. So right on. Look at this. Oh, there we go. All right. So I noticed in a lot of your videos, you do a lot of ultralight. So it makes sense that you and Ethan from um, uh, Fish Anything yeah. would kind of like connect. So I, I, I talked to the burly fishing guys last week. And they're all about, they're all about ultralight fishing. Yeah. Ultra, ultra. That's all they're, they're actually, they're, they're working with Monster Bass, I think. I think it's Monster Bass to get their own ultralight fishing rod. It's kind of named after kind of what they do, which is pretty rad. Um, so walk me through why you love ultralight applications now i typically will be fishing rivers not rivers like lakes and ponds that's just like what's around me that's accessible mm -hmm. um i only fish rivers and streams i'm not very good at it whenever i travel for work which is about once a month um so i'm really interested in how you identify how you find um kind of you just rolling down a road and you're like you pass over a bridge you're like i'm going to do that I got so many questions. <laughs> so first, let's talk about ultralight. Two, let's talk about how you identify the places where you do fish. Um, ultralight, like when I first started my channel, I was uh, I was throwing like a ten dollar using a ten dollar rod, um, and like six pound line, and I could just throw little lures. And I, I've learned to like do a lot more ultralight rods and uh, setups, and just gotten better with that. But I have a you know, up from fifteen dollar rods to hundred and twenty dollar rods. Probably I don't have like super expensive stuff for ultralight stuff. Um, you can get all kinds, but you know, you most of them are just it's either a light action. Like I like a light action better than an ultralight. And me and uh, Ethan argue about this. He likes ultra just because I I don't know what it is. I like a I want a little bit stiffer. But there's right. so many rods that in the action and like the way it is made. There's there's so much different rods and different setups you can use a fast extra fast tip moderate tip you know all these different things that i never i didn't know anything about um until i really just i've gotten into it and i'm still learning all the time so like i like a six 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 foot light rod four pound mono or fluorocarbon um doesn't you know sometimes sometimes i'll even throw braid on there like a six pound braid okay and i can throw a 164 ounce jig head and a one inch bait or, you know, maybe 130 seconds ounce. Uh, my favorite is probably 130 seconds ounce. Like a, and it was size six or eight hook, just a tiny little hook, little bitty weight ahead, little bitty, you know, Bobby Garland or something like that. And you can literally catch every any kind of fish in a creek from a bluegill to, you know, three pound bass or something that wants to bite it. So that right there lets you just be very diverse and catch lots of different species. So you don't even know what you're fishing for. I could be just fishing for whatever is trying to bite, like, and because you could be, you know, it could be 10 different species in that creek that will eat that lure. So you can, you're really opening up your, you know, target for what you're wanting to catch. And like, uh, you know, a, a six inch bluegill hits it and it's pulling and you feel it, you feel the tug, you feel the bite and it bends your rod and <laughs> it may even pull a little drag on, you know, something. Then you hook into a one pound bass and it feels like you got a monster on. Right. Um, but I, but I like to get everything I can get. If, if I'm doing that type of fishing, I want to catch like everything I can catch. Like just anything that wants to buy, I don't really care. I just want them all. I, I want all. Of them. I'm going to collect them all. That's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> I love it. So the let's talk a lures a little bit about ultralight. Now I'm sure talking to Ethan. I'm sure you tried out the donkey tail and the junior. Um, yeah. Those are the ones that are that stretch kind of like uh, Z Man's do, right? Yeah, um, they, yeah, they I, 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 I need to get my I need to get my hands on those before um, spring comes around. That's for sure. Um, but walk me through 
I mean, what you fish, top water in the streams, what's like your confidence baits? You're at a new, you're at a new stream. What are you pulling out guaranteed first? Um, if I, um, it depends on the size. Like if it, like I, I, I look at it and, and look first, I look at it like, how big is it? And try to break it down. Like, do I think there's bass in there? Cause some streams I find bass fishing, that's a whole nother setup. You know, that's a whole different thing I'm doing. But if I'm just ultralight fishing, like for whatever, like a trout magnet lure, yep. um, that's a, such a good lure that will catch literally almost everything in there. Um, 164th ounce, 132nd ounce jig head. Or uh, I, I have, I work with um, Pradco as like Yum and stuff like that and Bobby Garland. So I got like all the Bobby Garlands I could ever want. So <laughs> I get to try out all different types of guys. It's so hard not to go with that because they're just a perfect little size and they just got a good little body to them. And it's, you can flick them in. If I lose them, I lose them. Right. You know, but I can flip them in a little hole and just, you don't, I mean, is it a crappie in there? Is it a creek chub? It, you know, a shiner, whatever is in there, a warm mouth, something. You know, I'm just trying to get it. And then, like, usually those little smaller creeks where I'm doing that, like, if I catch one fish, I'm throwing back that same spot. You can catch, you know, 10 fish from one little hole that's in a little undercut or something like that. Yeah. So, um, but if in the summertime when it gets hot, I'll, there's some, you can use little crankbaits and stuff like that. But I, I like using a little lure, like a bobby guard, like a little minnow lure. And then I like using a, a rebel uh, crick hopper. Yep. Oh, oh, I got one here. Oh, yeah. Those have been around. Oh, but heck yeah. I, I, <laughs> This is, I think this may have been the lure that I used when I was a kid. There was a lure that I used when I was little and I, I never remember what it was, but it was similar. I remember that action and I love those little things because they just, that's, you know, you can, you can do a lot of stuff with it, but the way the fish hit it is, is more fun to watch the fish hit it. And you might miss a lot of them, but man, when they're ready for that thing, they explode on it because it's like <laughs> a little cricket, you know, or, you know, a bug or, you know, inchworm falling in the water. They just wham first one to it. Um, and that's where casting makes such a big difference. You have to really be, you have to really practice your casting and be good at casting and maneuvering. Cause where these places are, there's trees hanging every which way and you're, yep. you know, flicking it this way, that way, this way, trying to get that cast right on top of them. And then boom, they're on it. But that's one thing I, I noticed by watching your videos today. I mean, you got every reverse roll, roll side up, down, and you had control. Like, like that rod was part of you. <laughs> Now, granted, when you fish every day, you dial that in real yeah. easy. But it was it was really kind of it was really neat to watch you do that. You're like, you knew where you wanted it. I'd be like in the trees and have to go down and like get it again and out of the out of the branches because I if I was throwing it like you, I would be I'd definitely be in trouble. Um, let me see. Yeah, I there's I make a lot of risky casts, and um, but that's that's part of it. But yeah, I, I do it all the time. So and I and I really like that combat style fishing where i'm in there with the fish like all right i got this much room all right how am i gonna angle this rod to flick it right where i want to flick it and that's where you don't want a too long of a rod you know if you get you know that's why i don't like i hardly ever use a seven foot rod which is like a standard like you know fish size. so everything is usually smaller six foot or something like that especially in okay. high areas um here we and, got uh oh, go ahead keep going yeah no, I was just going to read some of the comments over here. Um, Dobbins Fury, 6-1 Light, 6-6. Six, six. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 6-6 six, six uh, is, uh, yeah, that's Chris. He actually lives right down the road from me. No, there you we, go. We fish all the time. <laughs> Love it. Let me see what we got over here. Oh, yeah, hey, everyone. <laughs> Basketball's big for your goal. Uh, um, yeah, I put that together. <laughs> let me see what else we got here. Oh, we just answered this question from Jigga with Jimmy. Um, used to use everything. Used to fish nothing but Mr. Twister grubs in the river I grew up in. I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up in the rivers. Um, and in fact, watching some of your videos, Pala wraps. Yep, watching some of your videos today. A lot of the places that you fish, I gotta be completely honest with you. I would have just been like, "There's nothing in there." Um, but you also have to have a love for all mm -hmm. fish, not just this kind of thing that we do in bass fishing biggest is best and if it's not four pounds or more you know it's not even worth taking a picture of and you know what i think it kind of i i might even be a bit um man I, it, it falls on me as well um i want to get back to the love the pure love of fishing whether you get the the one half you know three quarter pounder or you get the six pounder um man i i really need the it's all perspective so i love talking to you because <laughs> you you know when you're going into the rivers you're likely not grabbing giants or what what you know a giant to be for that size of 
stream or whatever it is. And that, so, that's what's fun is catching that fish that you know is the king of that hole. You know, yeah. it, it could be a seven inch uh, green sunfish. And you're, and you're like, that dude is, and he's like built. And you're like, that dude is the king of that spot right there. And then, then you'll come across something else. But like, I went out today just uh, to my little creek and I caught three fish. They were all about that long. <laughs> but like the, the, the little the little creeks just shut down around pretty much everywhere. If you're not looking for trout, I can go catch trout. But mostly I'm talking about like warm water species. Okay. And so, right, but I caught a creek chub, a shiner, and a tiny little bass. Tiny. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you can catch something that tiny actually takes some skill because, uh, I mean, that's casting yeah. such a small thing and such a, I mean, oh man, I love it. I that's where that. you have to have the right, like, I, I've got a lot of people come to me like, how do you cast lures that far? Well, first off on camera, you can't tell as well, but like having the right rod with, the, you know, makes a big difference. You got to have it, be able to whip it just like a bass rod. You're, you know, throwing a lure, you, you want that flex. Yep. If you're throwing a really small lure, you don't have any flex. Even with that small lure, you're not going to go very far with it. Hmm. Uh, my favorite one I, is I, what I use today right now is a 6.6 TFO rod, $100 rod. It's a light okay. action. And I, I got four pound mono on it and I was throwing a trout magnet. All right. Um, but I can still whip it. It's fun. Look at those little holes. Try to, And it sinks so slow. And I'm, I'm fishing it in like two foot of water probably. Like the deep hole of this creek is two, two and a half feet. So... You know that you want that slow drop to get through there. Give that fish time to hit it. Yeah, I like to hit it on the fall. Where if you're using something real heavy, if you're going through there with a little heavier jig, it's bam, just hitting the bottom right away, and they might not pick it up. Mm. Makes sense. So I got man, I got questions left and right over Go here. Uh, TMOC, what's the number one thing, plan, tactic for new lakes, creeks, and ponds? So it yeah, walk me through your brain. Um, are you just walking over these things by accident? You like you drive by and you're like, hey, next time and you drop in on that, or so, are you, or do you have some type of plan or thing that you kind of go through in your mind to identify new ones when you're going somewhere? Uh, if I if I'm if I'm going here, I I'm not even looking at the pond. I'm skipping the lake. I'm going right to the creek or the river. <laughs> I don't even care about the other two really, unless they're unless I've already fished. If I haven't fished the creek and the river in the area, that's the main things I want to fish. Like that's what excites me moving water flowing streams um just getting in there but find an access point first thing you know a lot i, I do I, i'll drive around and just oh look i never i didn't notice that or by now i've noticed everything around me but i was somewhere uh, a couple hours ago oh yeah when i was coming back from florida i was driving and there was a spot like three hours away i, I looked over like man i'll mark that on my maps if I'm ever back in the area i'll look them i'll see it I'll, you know mark it i'll mark it and i'll try to come back here or maybe i'll just plan a trip to it looked really cool. So I'm like, maybe I'll just plan a trip to go there one day and just explore it. I love exploration and I love like you can, you can get to almost every fish in a Creek and most rivers, let's just big rivers, but like in a lake or a pond, I feel like I don't, I don't know where the fish are. I have no idea what they're doing. There's so much water here. Yeah. Uh, especially in lakes. We got, you know, I, I live 30 minutes from Lake Chickamauga, mm. you know, yeah, all these lakes. I, I don't care to go out in the lakes. I don't go out there and fish, but all the creeks that run into them, Man, they're fun because they are loaded with fish, right? And there's there's so much diversity. But so if say, say I find a creek or a river, I look for public accesses. Look for drive around all the bridges, every bridge that on that, and see if people get off park there or not. If I see people where it's normal where people park there, I'm like, okay, that's that's access. I'm jumping in. If I don't right. see any no trespassing signs, I'm I'm going for it. <laughs> do you ever get yourself? In trouble, accidental trouble. You don't sound like the guy who tries to do it on purpose. Yeah, but. I, I've gotten asked to leave one time, and I've gone to a million places. Just once. Is that yeah. the video I saw where the landowner told you to get off oh, his half oh, of the river? Well, that was a that was a weird one. <laughs> okay, we'll right, let's talk about this real fast. We got to talk about this. So I'm going to set up the video. Um, well, you set it up for us. You were there, but I watched the video and I was like, I, I heard I heard what you said, but then yeah. I read all the comments and I was like. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Was John right? Yeah. It's so flipping confusing. So walk us through on, what it was all about. how you read the, the I, it, that, um, definition. But, and I so want to know, I mean, like, my rights. So yeah. I don't, you know, I don't want to trespass. But then again, I want to, I also want to be able to defend myself. Yeah. It's crazy. So walk us through that whole scenario so real quick. First off, every state has its own rules on what is a navigable water, what you're allowed to access, what does the home, what does the landowner own? Do they own the bottom of the river? Do they own up to the high water or low water mark or whatever it's called, the flood zone or something like that? Do they own the water? 
And in Georgia, they're one of the strictest about this. So if it's a if it's not a if it's private property on the sides of the river, the homeowner owns the bank. I mean, and the bottom of the river all the way to the middle of that stream. Mm. Unless they've owned both sides of it, then they own the whole bottom. If it's not navigable. Well, navigable for, for them is like barges going down it. Right. So nothing is navigable unless you're talking like a giant river. Okay. Um, so basically everything. So any kind of, if it's, if it seems like it's a Creek or a small river that, you know, it's 30 feet wide, you know, n- all of them are the owner owns and technically like if you really read it and talk to them talk to like the officials they they can control sort of what happens on their side of the water like for sure you couldn't go down on their on their half of the creek you couldn't drop an anchor in fisher because your anchor is touching their property right technically you can't even fish there if they don't want you to cast on their side of the water yeah, because the guy asked you to go to the other side. Yeah, which is video. the stupidest thing. And like, and like, I I wouldn't care. Like, but he, the, his his whole thing didn't even make sense. He's like, oh yeah, you can fish on that side, just don't fish on this side. I'm like, what does that even matter? Like, um, every state as the if you look at the rules, the rules are laws are a lot stricter than most people think, but people don't enforce it, and they'll probably never change these rules. There's a all laws from like the 1700s and stuff. Yeah. Um. Like technically, I, I wade creeks all the time in Tennessee. I'm trespassing. Well, I'm going on people's property, but they don't care. That's the thing. You know, the per the owner has to care to make an argument about it. Right. And if they make if they say something, then the law has to enforce it. Because I've talked to so many you know people and police officers don't even know they don't know that. But like the 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 official um, like the TWRA people here. And and half time they don't know they're like wait I don't I don't know what is the rule but it, they don't care until the loan the homeowner or the landowner makes a complaint about it because it is a lot of gray area um, but Georgia and I've heard Georgia and Colorado are like two of the worst and then there's some states that like if it's any kind of waterway you can you can walk it now okay. in Georgia you can't they can't stop them from just kayaking through so you're allowed to float through but he can he can tell me I can't fish his side and you have to leave. I like could fish on the other side, but I, but or I could just float through. So this river is like thirty feet wide, and this dude's like, "I need yeah. you to leave and fish on the other side of the river." Yeah, he owns like a hundred yards of it. Like his hundred yards is like he's really worried about that. I'm like, why does that even matter? Like I was gonna float through anyways until and he starts yelling at us. Yeah, like thirty seconds, you're probably gone off to the next thing. Um, but, Stephen M. This exact same scenario is playing out where I live right now. He says it's crap. Steven, write a little bit more detail. What's actually playing out? Um, I'm curious. So give us a little bit more context. We'll, we'll circle back on that. They're they're having bit. some they've been having some big time debates. Um, I don't know, legislation or whoever does that. Um, because the Flint River is like a well known river that people guide on for um shoal bass and stuff, and there's yeah. parts of it. And, and there's parts of it where the homeowner says you're not allowed to fish through my section and the guides technically when they when they get to that section they have to say they have to tell their clients no fishing through here till we get through this area then you can start fishing again Man. um it's it's crazy and like a lot of that that's a big wide river where there's lots of shoals like if you got out and got on the if you were just getting out to get your kayak over a shoal like you're they could complain about you you're on my property you know and you could be 30 feet away from uh, like you know 30 feet out in the middle middle of it or something right so, so it's are, um are you noticing this to be more of a problem in the past kind of seven eight years that you kind of been into it or is it just like the same it's, it's really gray it's very gray and i haven't noticed any more of it like this was the first time i ran into it but once i had this problem and i had this video a lot of the guys from georgia that commented like those are the people you can listen to it's all these right. guys like Oh, that's not the rule. Blah, blah, blah. Like they don't know what they're talking about. It's different everywhere you go. But the Georgia people were like, "Yes, that's you, that's the r- rule," and we have dealt with this in other situations. But it, it's only the people that want to put up a fuss about it until they change the like waterways to like you know it's free use for <laughs> for whatever you want to do. Right. But I mean, I, I can see both the way. If you own some land, you bought this big old pro- piece of land, and like this guy was a new guy. He had moved there recently. 
so now he's got he thinks he has his own private stream and all of a sudden there's all these people coming through fishing yeah and or they tubing do, and, and tubing. they yeah. have a tubing service through there too he's complained about that so i don't think they're gonna have the the state will shut him down but it depends on whoever has the money whoever's making the decisions you know yeah you know is it the landowners lobbying it or the you know the recreation people are trying to you know fight back or whatever but um, I, th- I feel like somebody's gonna have to make a decision about it because I feel like more and more people will complain and then it'll get brought up more, but it's, it's yeah. very touchy. And that's where like, I don't, I, now I know not to argue. I thought I was in the right saying, yeah, I can, how can you tell me I can't fish in this water? I'm right. like, there's no way you can tell me that. And that comes down turns out like I was wrong. <laughs> like, know your state regulation well the, the big argument if you read back through all of your um, comments and i don't know if this even holds any weight at all but there is federal law and then there's state law and does one supersede the other yeah. does state law matter and then it's even more gray is that right or am i wrong yeah i saw i read a bunch of that i stopped reading stuff because I, I don't know who to <laughs> it went on forever it, it's yeah i was i was thankful hole. like keep on commenting people please um that that, that video <laughs> did good just because so many people were interested in it and well, like telling me I'm wrong or telling me I'm right. I'm like, I don't care. Just comment. Say what you want to say. Yeah. You don't know. Well, Steven, <laughs> thank you. He said, do a Google search on the DuPage River and the Plainfield, Illinois river rafting business. The DNR is involved. So I imagine there's some homeowners that don't want the party barge rolling through their backyard every, <laughs> every yeah. day at 3 p.m. Um, interesting. Uh, low life. In Ohio, local governments try to buy out all the lands near the waterways. Go Ohio. Where I'm from. Love that. All right. So now, do you do is this kayak fishing obsessed, right? So I know you got kayaks. I've seen, I've seen them. You've had multiple kayaks over the yeah. years. Um, share your journey of kayaks. I want to hear kind of what you've had, how you upgraded with, what you have now, and kind of what you love and hate about all of them. Yeah. I, um, yeah. When you ask me, I'm like, I, I'm not an expert on kayaks, but I have had an interesting journey this last four years. So I, I bought it. I got a, I, I think I'd already been doing my channel a couple of years and I, there were some rivers that I really, I was like, I'd never floated a river or never kayaked. I, I kayaked one time with a friend like 10 years ago and just uh, like on a lake. So I'm like, this kayaking sounds awesome. Like you can get to explore places and do things. So I finally bought it. I went and bought it like an $800 kayak from Dunham Supply. I, the Pelican something is a, is a fishing one. All right. Um, and I thought that was an expensive one. It was like, you know, it was like seven something. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm buying a high end one. <laughs> yeah, a little bit I know. Not sure but, Pelican is the brand for that, but yeah, go. Yeah. So <laughs> they do have a, like a hyperdrive thing um, now. It has like a yeah, they got all Hobie kinds of stuff thing. now. Yeah. yeah, they're 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 still they're still kicking. Like, so I, I, buy, I buy this, you know, I buy this kayak. Uh, it's like a, I think it's twelve foot, and um, I think I took it out a couple times, like stuff. But the first first trip I did, like. We're going to float this river that's close to me. It's a skinny river. It's about the same size as that river that was in that video about the landowner. So it's like there's shoals where you're going to get out and like drag a little bit. Then there's some deep holes and cuts. And I'm going with two other guys. And one of them's experienced. Pretty, they're both the other guys are kind of experienced um, kayakers. But it's it's just an easy flowing river most of the time. A couple of sharp turns. So the first time... So we're, we're going, going great, catching all kinds of fish. It's like a really good summer day. And the, there's two guys in front of me. The first guy goes through this like little sharp, little cut, and there's like a little eddy. He just goes through and goes over in the side. Next guy goes through and gets stuck like right in the current. His fishing rods get stuck in an overhanging bush. Okay. And I'm already in the current and I'm like coming behind him and I can't, and I'm already got grabbed by the current. You know, I can't, I can't stop. stop. And it's just a narrow. So I, I, running him turn sideways and i'm like oh this ain't good and he never moves he finally gets out of the way i'm reaching up to grab like something i'm a kayak turns i flip over i'm stuck in this current like four foot deep but i can't stand up because the current's so strong my i can't which hand it is now I, yeah it was my right hand my right hand is stuck in a tree and i and i and like i'm not under the water i'm like surfing on the water sort of just in like fast current and i look and i'm like what's going on my hand so he had a a a a crankbait i got stuck in the tree the the hook got stuck in my finger it's just it's just it's not like super deep or anything but it's just i cannot get it out 
and I'm stuck in this tree. I have to reach over and grab my pocket knife, cut the braided line as to free surfing. myself. Do as what? As you're surfing. As you're surfing. Yeah. All Push this is going out. on. Is it down buddy, I look over my buddy. He's like my uh, the guy I knew closer. He's like he's like he's like I can't get to you because the current was too strong. He couldn't walk over there. I was like I'm okay. So I'm like, well, okay. I just cut the line and float back. You know, just like 15 feet or 10 feet where I can like get in a little calmer water and stand up. Um. It was, it was a crazy one thing happened so fast. And like, I never would have thought in a million years. Uh, after that point, I've worn my life jacket <laughs> in every moving water. <laughs> like, it doesn't even matter how deep it is. Because this is like two foot water most of the time. But right. I'm like, what if I was stuck under the water and couldn't get free? And, you know, with that current, current is so, you know, people, if you've been current, it's deceivingly strong. Like, yes. it is ridiculous. Even yes. if it's like three foot deep, it doesn't even matter. So, um like I lost a GoPro, I lost some lures, I lost some stuff, you know, flip back over, fish the rest of the day. I, I cut the hook off where I just had a little bit sticking out. It wasn't really bad. It ended up not being that bad, but it was just just kind of hanging in there. Caught some it. more fish. You didn't try to take it out. You just left it in. You cut it. Well, flush. I tried. I couldn't get it free. And then finally when I got home, I could like wiggle on it and I wiggled it loose. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, that was an experience where I'm like, it was my first time ever doing like a float too. But I, f- I fell in love with floating rivers. Like, okay. Is, have you ever done that? You ever gone a river, like point, start at one point, take out another point. I have, but not fishing. I've done it like, a okay. I think I would love it. No, Carolina, before we move on to this, Carolina Bass Hunter, and this is all video, right? Yeah. 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 Hey, Kyle. What's up? Hey, Kyle. I watch a lot. Um, yeah. This is, this is a video. This is like, uh, maybe three years ago now. All right. But, um, yeah, I, I, cause I had, I had, I lost one camera, but I had another camera rolling. So it got part of the view and I still had some stuff from the video where I caught some fish, but, um, but I kind of just told the story at the end and, um, yeah, it, it was crazy, but that's, that is, is becoming my most favorite way to fish. And if you can put in, especially like a skinny river, it's scenic, you're by yourself, you're going through, it's your, your, I, I always say that in a, a river flow. You're fishing the least pressured fish that you could ever come across. Right. Because those fish are doing their own thing. They're totally wild, totally not used to people, unless there's people like, you know, nonstop. Right. But most most of these little streams like that are just, you know, nobody fishes them through the winter. They get left alone, you know, and then maybe people are going down on Saturdays or something like that. Yeah. You but, know what? Uh, I, the, the lakes and ponds that I fish around here, they're just getting more and more congested and saturated. And then, you know, everyone's yelling at each other because they're within whatever distance they feel is the right distance that you should be away from yeah. them. And um, and so I, I'm starting to kind of fall more and more in love with the idea of floating. It's just a little extra work, right? You typically have two people. You got to mm-hmm. do an extra driving and, you know, you got to time it all out correctly. But I can only imagine that fishing is so much better. One, you're not. It's just you and your buddies, right? You're not going to run into anybody necessarily, very rarely. And like you said, it's unpressured water. So, man, I think I definitely need to. I just need to do the research around me. Yeah, it, it is more work, but it, it, the payoff is so much better. It's just, it's a fun. You're having fun no matter what. Like you're getting to float, especially if it's in the summer. Say it's nine degrees outside. You're in a. There's probably shade. I'm usually dangling my feet in the water, or I can stop and jump in anytime I want. You know. Um, you're, you know, it's just, you're, you get to get the flow with the current, you know, all that stuff. Now, if you like, I'm going to fish a river tomorrow. I'm actually meeting with Alex Rudd uh, tomorrow. You said you're going to have him on. Yeah. He's on next week. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. So um, we're going to a, a big river in Knoxville area. Um, and this is a little bit bigger river, but we're got, we got three of us going and we could be three deep going down the same bank and we're not fishing We're we could all be catching fish or, or, you know, like there's so much, to cast at that you can't just pick apart a spot unless you just stop there. So on a lake, you can just find a point or a, a law or something. You're like, I'm going to fish here for 30 casts. Like on a right. river, you're just casting, moving, casting, moving, you know, and all, everybody can be catching fish. Like you could, you could have, and, and I've done this so many times where I'm the third or fourth guy back in a little river and I catch more fish than the guys in front of me. You huh. know, it, it all depends on where you cast or, or what's going on. So yeah. Making making accurate casts is, is the hardest thing though. Like, you know, because you're moving and usually you got one shot, maybe two, to get a good cast if you see a stump sticking out or a little break. Right. 
Oh, it's kind of fun though, if you if you think about it. You're like, all right, I gotta get, I gotta nail, I gotta, I gotta nail this, or I just don't have an opportunity today. Yeah, huh. yeah. You, and you if go- you catch a fish, you gotta fight them in while you're moving. That's a whole nother thing. Like you gotta get used to, because you gotta be. It's easy to like run into something because you're fighting a fish in, and it turns you around, and you're like, oh, there's a log sticking out by the, you know, flip or something, or there's overhanging trees. I gotta have all my rods down there, or this branch sticking out or something like that. So it, it's a uh, you're right there with it for sure. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot of action going on. And then when you're done, when you get to the takeout point, you know, oh, okay, we're day's done. We know when we're starting. We know when we're stopping. True. You said no more there. one last cast. I guess you can stick around the, yeah. the takeout point and, you know, goof around for a while. Uh, Usually by that time, everybody's wore out. And we're like, okay, yeah. we either How caught a lot we... of fish or we didn't catch a lot of fish. Either way, we're tired and ready to go. There's a question I have. So if I'm getting ready to go out and try it, maybe for the first time, do a float. How many, how, how long do you recommend? And for like, okay, I want to go out for four hours. Like how many miles should I, should I plan out? It, it, Is there a general it, rule of thumb for that? I like to do five to seven mile floats for the most part. And it, it, we're going to do a 10 mile float tomorrow, but it's a big river with constant flowing water. Mm. Now it depends on how small it is. The smaller the water, the longer it takes. And the smaller the water, the more like holes you can kind of spend time on. Bigger yeah. river, you're kind of always moving, and you know there's. It depends on the current. Like a lot, all of our, most of our rivers are controlled by dams. So like, how fast is the current flowing? Um, are you gonna stop at shoals, you know, or is there slow sections of the river? Like some rivers will have current and then big long slow sections where you basically got to paddle through. Mm. But um, you know, you a mile to two miles an hour if you're fishing. Um, if a mile an hour is going really slow, if you're, you're like, you're like really taking your time, yeah. but you, it's easy to go two miles an hour. So yeah, most of the time I, I try, I like to do, there's, there's one section I do by me. That's five, five miles, but there's, there's a, there's a, there's like a mile section that goes by really fast that you, like you don't catch a lot of fish from. Mm. And we'll do that three and a half hours, right. but that's three and a half hours. Usually pretty good fishing. Like it happens pretty fast. And next time I do it, I'm going to slow down. And then there's a there's another river I've done. It's a six mile stretch, and every time I've done it, it, it always takes longer than we think. It it takes it'll take five six hours, and that's on the water time. That's not t- counting the driving your truck to the takeout, unload loading, going right. to the put in, going down, getting out, then coming back up, get your vehicle. So all that factors in could could be an extra hour or two there, just kind of doing all that running around stuff. Huh. So well, that, that takes away a little bit of it, but it's like once you once you get everything out of the way, you everybody gets out in the water, you're like, boom, we don't have nothing to worry about for six miles till we get to the takeout. It's you know, nothing but fishing. Oh, I need to do it. I'm just gonna drive down to Tennessee and go fishing with you. We got all kinds of plans. I, I got a lot. I'm, I'm I even have more I'm like working on. Like there's places near me, you know, 30, 40 minutes away that I haven't done yet. And I'm like, I just haven't had a guy like the setup to do it. Right. So there's I I, I want to explore more and more, but yeah, come on down. I got a as long as it's in um, April, probably about April, most of my little little creeks, they, the streams, they start getting good. The bigger okay. rivers you can still do, but I like to, for the most part, late March, April time before I start really floating a lot of the smaller waters. Do you have like a power pole in your yak to kind of stop if you needed to? No, but that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't actually have a lot of stuff on there. I like um, another thing about like these small rivers. I like to keep it as simple as possible. Right. So, so I, I, I didn't finish. So my kayaks, if you want to hear, I do. Uh, I forgot uh, the next step was so. Once I got into, uh, I started with that pelican, and then I started doing some rivers. I started going out in the lake every once in a while. I hated going out in lakes, like you said. I would go out in the summer, go out Chickamauga Lake, and there's not a bank that hasn't had a boat go down it five times. Mm. by nine o'clock probably this it's crazy you know it's like what you're talking about like i don't like how am i gonna outfish these guys i, I don't know anything but um that's where the, the kayak that i've learned to like you got to look for these little out of the way places and little spots and different things to get into but um so i started doing kayak tournaments two years ago two two years and two months ago i did my first kayak tournament and it's because uh, i saw alex and my buddy josh who i meet with tomorrow I saw them doing it and they would post videos. I'm like, that looks kind of fun. Yeah. Like I never thought I would do a tournament. I just always thought, you know, boat fishing guys that know everything and have 
100 rods in their boat. Like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. But I see this kayak tournament. It's like, you know what? This don't look too bad. You only got to catch three fish, maybe five fish, you know, to, to, to have a limit. And so the first one I do is on that Pelican. It's a windy day. The water's choppy. And I was so miserable. I hated it. <laughs> I quit like an hour early because I was just tired of fighting the wind. I'm just huh. getting blown back, trying to pat, paddle my way back up, get blown back. I, I catch some fish, but I was just so aggravated by the end of the day. I'm like, this is not fun. Um, I do like two on that. And then Old Town. So Old Town sends me a kayak Okay. for free. They're the P PDL 120. So, you know, oh. 12 foot pedal drive. Nice. See, I'm a big pedal drive fan. Life changing. Like, it is life changing. You don't need an anchor. You just nonstop. You control the wind. Yeah. I would, what I would have never have known how big, how much I would have liked that kayak and like how I've used that. I take that kayak so many places. Like it is, it's insane. I've taken, I've, I've done a ton of river floats with it. That's what I did river floats with too. Cause it's so stable. You know, it weighs, I think 90 something pounds, I think without the drive. Okay. I think that's that still heavy kayak. That's a beast. Yeah. And I'll still drag it in places and, and like, I'll take it anywhere. I'm like, dude, this is cause, cause it's so comfortable and so stable. I don't have to mm -hmm. worry about leaning over and tipping out and, but yeah, I'm not, it's not great for paddling, but if I'm, if I'm in a lake or, or a big river, I can pedal. I'll, I'll pedal upstream and like fish stuff. And dude, I, I, I've gone so many places because of that kayak where I've, I've never would have gone before. And you can stay out on it eight, nine hours and you don't, doesn't just kill you. You know, you're like, okay, you know, my back right. will be a little sore, but you're not just like, I hate to see on this thing, you know, like well, that's what I hear from everybody with kayaks. Like I can't stay out my kayak more than three hours, you know? I'm like, well, how much did you pay for your kayak? Yeah, yeah. Three hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can almost do it by hours. Three hundred dollars. Okay, you got about you. You bought yourself an hour on the water. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. So I, I got that that pedal drive, and the first time I had it, I wanted I won a kayak tournament. The first the first tournament I used it in. Nice. It was pretty cool. And um, I've won like in my little local group. We have twenty five to thirty people that give these tournaments. I've won a couple. That's been really cool to do. I've come in pretty far in the low low end also a bunch but I, i've enjoyed the kayak tournaments because we go to like a different lake we have so many lakes around us we can go to about a different lake every time All right and then we we have one coming up in january that's a honey hole you can pick anywhere within 100 miles of this like one spot oh, nice. yeah um and then we have a river one where we do river floats you have to you have to you can pick a river but you have to um you have to fish a moving water okay. um within a certain area so that's the kind of stuff that really drew me into kayak tournaments now I, I I just watched some of this Chad Hoover stuff and like some of these kayak tournament videos and that those big time tournaments like I don't know if I that, that stuff's kind of pushing me away from it um, just because there's like I I don't know because I don't know that much I'm not a boat fishing guy I don't have right. a background of like that and I just I, I like the kayak because it's so convenient and easy but I I am fishing in the um the Bass Nation um, national tournament in March it's okay. here. If it's at uh, Chicken Walk, I made it to that somehow. I'll probably, <laughs> I don't plan to do very good, but I, it's going to be cool to do. I've never done anything like that. So, well, if you don't plan to do any good, you don't plan to do any good, you can always surprise yourself, right? So, yeah, you, you, it, always for the better. Hey, I'll I get it. last. I'm, I'm happy with that one. <laughs> well, I, I think it was when you were sharing your story about, you know, basically being connected to a tree and you know, by a <laughs> by a crankbait. Yeah. Do you ever want to know? Rewind is still awake. And commenting as of that conversation, so <laughs> he, he is care. not sleeping yet. <laughs> He's still awake, so that's good. Keeping people alive. I actually did hear someone say that. Hey, hey, no offense at all. I put on the burly guys whenever I'm falling asleep. Um, <laughs> respect. So <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so, do you still have that um, old town? Yes, uh, I have. Um, so I got the old town 120, and then old town sent me another one. I like reached back out to him, and then. Um, Cause I, I'd use that and I don't even know how many videos it's probably a hundred videos. And then they sent me the one Oh six, the pedal yeah. drive. And that's an awesome little kayak. I really like it. You know, it's not as big and, and quite as stable, but I took it up North when, when I went and I did all kinds of stuff in it. And then, um, I just got, uh, I started working with a company close to me. It's a, uh, frontier outdoors. It's in, it's, it's about an hour away and they, they are a dealer for Crescent. Yeah. And they gave me a, a Crescent Sholey. Okay. And I finally used it for the first time when I went to Florida. 
So that was my first time in it. Cause um, my goal, like I, I, they, he kind of they reached out to do a partnership and, you know, I'm glad that worked out. I can kind of promote his place, but my goal was to, or my goal is to be as experienced as I can on like creeks and rivers. Like that's what I want to know. No, that's what I want to be able to help people with. That's what I want to have knowledge on. And especially in kayaks too. Like I want to know, like they're coming out with these river kayaks. Like I want to be able to have experience using those and sharing them with people. Like I'm, I really, I mean, I'm making enough money. I'm living good off YouTube, but I'm not, I can't just buy anything I want. So whenever I can get people to send me something or get something for free that, you know, that really helps out, but I'm glad to do it knowing that I can help other guys that are like river guys like me or, 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 or Creek guys like, the Crescent Shelly is 77 pounds. Uh, it's not near as stable as the old town, but man, right. it cuts through water crazy. Like with a, you know, paddling it, I can paddle it up current, turn around. As far as that stuff, it's, it's, it's a way different. And it being, it being lighter, I can get it into more places. Yeah. I plan to do a lot of like skinny water floats with it. How much is and the weight again? 77 pounds. Okay. Okay. Which, yeah. I know that some people that sound like that's still really heavy. Like, well, in the, in the kayak world, and I, I'm I'm six four, two hundred thirty pounds probably. So I'm a big guy. I was gonna get a smaller kayak, but like, you, you downsize and really gives up a lot of stability. The smaller you get, yeah. And I've tried. I've had a couple of different ones, and I, I like I'm liking this crescent. It's 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 pretty nice. You know, it's been fun to see the industry, um, you know, you kind of go from fishing kayaks and now they're even niching down even in further, like, okay, this is a river fishing kayak. Um, Dude, I, I love it. Yeah. You're starting to see that a whole lot more. So I love that you, 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 you found your niche. Um, seems to be a lot of success with it and man, I, I'm happy for you. It's been, it's been a blast. We're at like an hour, which is flown by, um, <laughs> but before we hop off, I have, if you have a question, uh, for John, um, after I do the lightning round here in just a second. And by the way, my dad is still listening too. So he's not falling asleep. This is great. People are not falling asleep. And I'm having a good time. This is perfect. Um, but if you have a question, go ahead and throw that in. We'll kind of end on those. But John, I do lightning round. Uh, basically five quick questions. One word answers or so. I don't know. I'm not a real strict stickler on that. Um, but I think it's kind of fun to, to kind of run through these. So you ready for it? Mm -hmm, go ahead. All right, here we go. Favorite video you've ever made. Ooh. I guess first. <laughs> the first video. Hey, all right. I like I it. I mean, yeah. Favorite kayak you've ever owned. We might have talked about this already. Yeah. So yeah, the the old town PDL 120 has definitely changed changed my fishing. Love it. Worst video I've ever made. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's deleted. The I deleted a bunch. <laughs> um I, I don't know because half the times the one I, I think is the worst was ends up getting the most views. So it, yeah, <laughs> welcome to YouTube. Yeah, you yeah. spend like fifty hours on one video and it gets like hundred views. Yeah. You spend two minutes on one, and it goes viral. It's silly. Um, if you can only fish one lure in a river, creek, creek. Oh yeah, is it creek or creek? By the creek. way, <laughs> I'm adding a, I'm adding a new one. Creek yeah. or creek? Uh, I, it, it depends on uh, how far out in the country you live. In Tennessee, where you're at. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah, most people call it creek, but yeah, creek <laughs> creek's pretty common. <laughs> What's the one lure if you can only fish the rest of your life? What would it be? It, this is a uh, trout magnet. All right, right on. <laughs> and the last one, best piece of fishing advice you have ever heard or received. Ooh, received or heard? Man. Huh, that's a, I don't know. That's a good one. I I can't most of the most of the stuff that I've done, I've just kind of learned by doing it. I, I guess is just trying trying new things. That's like I, I was real hesitant to try a lot of different stuff. Now it's like, you know what, why not try something? And I and I've learned a lot by just trying new lures and stuff like that. Yeah. I like it. And by one one Kush one says it's pronounced crick, by the way, because you yeah, he must live right. out there in the boonies a bit. All right, so we got a couple questions here. We're going to finish out our time. Stephen M. Hey, John, what's your favorite fish under six inches to catch? Green sunfish. All right. Any They're, reason why? Uh, or just the, how beauty, beautiful they are? This, this, this is what this is based off of. My logo is based off of green sun. Because I they identify as a creek fish. That's that's what I... They are like the, tip, the most typical creek fish that you will find. They live in creeks. 
mostly all the time. They live in some rivers, but basically really small creeks. They they push up to the very front, like headwaters of streams, okay. to avoid everything else. And uh, when they when they're hungry, they will eat anything. They have a big mouth on them. All right, yeah. nice fun fish. Got another question here from Untamed Bowman. How much stuff could you bring on your bass float? You keep it in bags, box. I know you're kind of a, a minimalist when it comes to that, but I most of the time, if I'm doing a float, I try to, you know, it depends on the water, but like, like I just got everything loaded up today. I got uh, one of uh, the, uh, what's that thing's called? One of those boxes. I forget the name of it, whatever. But I, I, I got probably 10 bags of soft plastics, like one little hard plastic box with a few crankbaits in it and some spinner baits. And if I can't catch one of those, then I probably can't catch any fish. <laughs> but I mean, I got, I'm going to throw a, a, a spinnerbait tomorrow, a crankbait, probably a Helgramite, and maybe a Yumdinger. And, you know, it's probably about it. But I, I like, I like definitely like keeping it simple. It feels like the less you take and the more simple it is, the more fish I end up catching. Cause yeah. I take what I'm confident in. Yeah. You know, take the confident lures or lures you know how to fish. Hardly ever do I, unless I'm doing something different but yeah the helgramite that's that's I, uh, one of my favorite lures there i like the tackle hd helgramite stuff that do really well i need to try that i still haven't tried that yet yeah no they're just i just like the action of them they're kind of thin and yeah, so when them, you put yeah. them on a, like a ned rig or something like that or some type of jig yeah they they performed well well ladies and gentlemen we are at the end of our time one hour and four minutes that flew by so if you haven't done it yet please help me out hit that like button help out with the replay and if you have not done it you probably already have done it already Head over to John's page, hit that sub button. He just continues to put out great content. And the beauty, you know what, John, which I'm pre impressed by, you know, the videos that suck the most on my channel are the ones of me actually fishing. And so no yeah. one ever wants to watch those, <laughs> but everybody wants to watch yours because that's all you put out there is fishing videos of you fishing. If so, I don't have a fish caught, people complain of mine. I'm like, <laughs> why do I just need a fish cut? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know it's a good day because uh you actually see the video. You don't see the videos where you don't get skunked. So yeah. hey guys, everyone, thanks for watching. Like I said, I got Alex Rudd coming on next week. Uh same time, same place. But hope you have a great rest of the week. And uh yeah, see you next time. All right, bye.